All right, so what we're doing in here is we're gonna do a, our flake coating in here. Room's about 20 by 20. I'm getting the floor ground today. A few little hairline cracks we gotta fix. Hey everybody, so what we're doing today is we're going to install our epoxy garage floor coating on this room right here, which used to be a garage floor. The owners are converting it into a finished space now, and then they added on a garage on the other side of this. Now, when we do our epoxy garage floor coatings, the first thing we always do is grind the floor. Now, this one right here, luckily, it didn't have any other coatings on it. No concrete sealers, no paint, no epoxy, so the concrete actually ground fairly easily. It didn't take Luke and I very long to get the floor all ground with uh, just using these little hand grinders. Now, on a bigger floor or something that's got paint on it or epoxy, we'd probably use our walk-behind grinder. We get a big walk-behind that we can put diamonds on that'll grind the floor up really nice and fast for us, but... Where this one wasn't that big, these two little hand grinders, we, we both had this ground in about 30 minutes, I'd say. He's using, Luke's using a 7-inch Metabo, and I'm using my little 5-inch DeWalt. We got diamond cup wheels on these, so it really, it really scratches up the surface really good, and it cleans the concrete for us, gets it all prepped. Now there was, after we ground it, we noticed there was a lot of these, these cracks in here. Some of them were, were pretty good size, like this one. A lot of them were just little hairline ones. And the way we address that, we address it a couple ways. We do have a really fast setting, like epoxy paste that we use. And then we also use Bondo right here. Bondo, it dries really, really fast and it dries really hard. And it really fills in these cracks really easily. So that's one reason we like to use it today. And if we're gonna, if we're gonna try to do this whole floor in a day, get all the epoxy, the flakes, the top coat and everything, we need to use products that are really, really good and that dry really fast. So that's one of the reasons we're using it here. And if you're going to use Bondo, you know, this stuff sets up really quick. So you just got to mix up a little bit at a time. But you can see how Luke and I attack this. We just use a little putty knife, get everything filled in. We're not being like, like too careful of, of overfilling it. We definitely want to leave it a little higher than normal. Because as you're going to see here in a minute, I'm going to just grind it flush and then uh, that's going to leave it perfect just for the coating. And you can see after about 20 minutes you can grind this stuff and it just looks really, really good. I'm going to show you a close-up right here. See how it fills that in? So those cracks are basically filled and they shouldn't, they shouldn't come back on a space like this. If the, if the concrete's not still moving, those won't reappear back up through the coating. Now I wouldn't do it on a like an exterior slab where the concrete could still be expanding and contracting a lot because of the weather. But on interior floors like this, this stuff works really, really good. Now we're just doing a little prep before we do the coating. Those are the flakes we're going to use. We're, we always put them in five gallon buckets just to make it easier to, to broadcast onto the floor. And then Darren's getting his little mixing station ready. We're going to use a gray colored base coat. The stuff we use here, it comes clear. And then we put a color pack in it, depending on how much we're using. And then we mix the color right in with it before we actually start mixing the, the coating together. We're actually going to use a three gallon kit here. He's putting in part B, uh, part A which is the resin. So he's mixing the color in the resin and then once he gets all that mixed in, then we can break it down into smaller kits and put the hardener in with it. You can see how nicely that color mixes right in there. I have a course where I teach you all these steps too guys. Down in the description below there's a link for it, my garage floor epoxy course. And I break it right down for you step by step on just you know job sites like this. So I teach you how to do this and do it right so it'll last for, for years and years and years. So if that's something that interests you, you know, go ahead and click down on that link below. Now Darren's mixing the hardener in with it. And we like, we like to mix a certain amount because 
depending on how much you mix, that's going to depend on how much coverage you're going to get per square foot. So we like going, we like going a certain amount of square footage at a time. Um, we don't want to mix up too too much because the stuff will start setting up on you too quick, and then you know we don't we don't want to mix just a tiny little bit. So on this one right here, this floor wasn't too big; it was just a little over 400 square feet. So we're gonna mix up. We'll end up mixing up about two and a half kits on this one. We we like to have one or two guys cutting in edges, and then one guy's gonna go back with the 18 and start rolling out with the 18 inch roller. And what's what, Darren's usually the one that always does the mixing. You know that way you don't have a bunch of guys mixing things differently. It's nice if you can have one guy mixing. If you're doing this for a business, if you're doing it for yourself, just on your own floor, then you're probably going to do the mixing and you're probably going to do the rolling out too. But we like to have you know certain guys do certain things, and it just makes everything flow a lot easier and quicker, and the process just 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 no chance of mistakes that way. There we are, cutting our edges in first. This one didn't have any baseboard on it, so he's going to end up putting baseboard on this after, so we didn't have to, we didn't have to get in under that sheetrock. You don't want to get any of the crap from the sheetrock onto your brush. All we had to do was go right flush with it, and it's going to be covered. Now, yes, this does, that blue thing in the center is a center drain. Remember, this used to be an old garage. Um, now they're going to kind of use it as like an entry entry room. They live on a lake here, so they didn't really want to level the floor out. They wanted to keep the floor sloped to the drain and use the drain existing drain, you know, as a way just to keep the floor dry if they do get water on it. We had to re actually replace that floor drain. I'll have another video pop up at the end that shows how we took out the old video there was an old cast iron drain in there it was really a mess and then we installed a brand new stainless steel drain so I'll, I can show you how we do all that in the video at the end you see it's getting a little crowded for us now we're going to kick Darren out and then uh, I'll go back and start flaking some more and Luke will, Luke's going to roll this last little piece out being pretty careful about we don't want to get too much in there remember this stuff goes down at a certain thickness I I teach all that stuff in the course guys so if you want to learn about that then you know click on that the products we use are really good high quality products we don't use the the cheaper products you get at some of the big box stores those just they aren't as durable they aren't as high a quality they're not as scratch resistant they're not as chemical resistant the products we use are from uh, really good manufacturers. They last a long, long time. We do probably 50 to 100 of these floors a year. So, you know, we've been doing it for 20 years. So, uh, you know, through the years, we figured out the good products versus the bad products. And, you know, we settle on two or three companies that make really high quality products that are also user friendly that, you know, apply really, really easily. I like broadcasting the flakes. We call this to rejection. So I completely cover the base coat. A little tiny bit of the base coat does show through after the floor is all done. But for the most part, the color of the floor will end up being the color of the flakes. Yeah, we're just scraping all the flakes flat right now, making the floor nice and smooth, getting rid of any of the excess flakes on the floor. We can reuse those flakes. We'll just scrape, scrape them up, put them in back in the bucket. And if we have another floor that's going to be the same flake, we'll just reuse them on that floor because they're still good and clean. And we're getting prepping for the top coat now. So we're just vacuuming up as much of that excess flake as we can. And then now we're here we are using the clear polyaspartic top coat. Polyaspartics, they're a little bit more chemical resistant and scratch resistant than just regular epoxy is and they're also UV resistant they're not going to yellow in the Sun so being there's a big door here that's going to let a lot of Sun in you know we like using the polyaspartics 
to keep the floor from turning yellowish in that area. And again, Darren's the mixer. He's the one that's, he's really got the important job. You know, Luke and I are just spreading it out <laughs> evenly. Um, we got the easy job here. We have a little method to our madness too on the top coat. You know, we like we like rolling it out a certain way, and then we have a finish roll we do so we don't leave any roller lines. We want to make sure there's no puddles. We want to make sure it's spread out nice and even. That way, at the end of the day here, when you'll see it at the end, it's going to look really, really nice when we're done. Now remember what this floor looked like when we started. It was all beat up. It was ugly. It was dirty. It had a lot of cracks. And now you can see it's turning into a really nice finished floor. You could use this stuff on garages, uh, basements, inside your house, bathrooms, um, car dealerships, I mean, restaurant. You could use this coating just about anywhere. Kitchens, commercial kitchens. You can see I'm getting that spread out. I want to make sure everything's right. Don't want it too thick. We don't want it too thin. And it really, the coating, the clear coating really helps pop the colors in the flake too. Now there's hundreds and hundreds of different combinations of flake colors to pick from. We try to choose them, you know, about 20 of the most popular ones and then we keep, try to keep to that if we can. We don't, we don't want to have too many flakes left over in the shop that people won't use. So I'm going to put the finishing strokes on this, then we're going to get out of here. This job will be done. Yeah. So again, guys, thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning how to do this, check out my link below, and we'll see you on the next one.